and uh, didn't have a specific thought uh, when I pressed record. This morning it's six, some, seven something maybe uh, here on the west coast and uh, of the U.S. And so, but I was encouraged to go ahead and uh, press record, and so that's what I did. Um, and so I know we just finished up uh, a lunar eclipse, and uh, for many of us who have chosen the high road, um, you can tell this is the first time I'm talking this morning. My voice is still cracking. <laughs> but um, for those who have chosen the high road, and the high road being that of ascension, self-love, getting back to the original um, you, and that original you is is full of agape love. That original you uh, is not hooked on drugs. The original you is not an alcoholic. The original you is not a porn addict, is not a child molester, is not a R-A-P-I-S. I shouldn't have said that child thing, I guess. Uh, is not a R-A-P-I-S T. Um, but you are faithful, and if you weren't yesterday, you now made a decision to become that uh, and to do the work, to to correct those deficiencies. You know, it's like taking care of a body. There is a spiritual body, and there is a natural body. And just like the natural body, if you free it, feed it French fries all day, and that's all you eat every day, and pizza, you never take advantage of a gym membership, you know? Um that's what you're going to look like and that's what you're going to feel like same thing spiritually um, you know so I encourage you the full armor of God is is your crown your third eye your heart chakra your third chakra I said those backwards uh, as far as order is concerned but that irrelevant um, and actually irrelevant you know irrelevant is actually not a, a true word it's a made up one kind of like ain't it's one that was kind of eventually added <laughs> because it was used so common. But it's actually not relevant is the correct term. Uh, so, uh, yes, <laughs> so that's not relevant, <laughs> um, the order of the chakras that I'm talking about at this time. But So, yeah, so then your solar plexus and sacral and root chakras, right? Uh, and you're taking care of those. Uh, those help to... to you to put on your full armor of God. The full armor of God is not reading a scripture every day or reading that book for, for an hour a day. That's not the full armor of God. And if you don't believe me, then um, I just encourage you to look at the fruit that's on your tree from your decades of being vested into that book and and what you have without lying, manipulating, stealing, cheating, conniving, you know, running the streets with your cronies, like look around you. And um, you just might find that you've been asking for things for months. I mean, not for months, but for years or decades. Um, that you are still desiring and you have no idea what the path to reach those things are. Uh, there are things that I still desire today uh, for me. Um, it's been an interesting journey. Uh, the 48 years, uh, next month will be 49, that I've been living. Thankfully, I feel like I'm 30. Uh, so that's a good thing. Um, even with a kidney transplant and, uh, and that. So, uh, so in my 48 years, I've been homeless uh, three times, uh, and I would be homeless right now, um, except for me hearing and obeying uh, the voice of Most High when I decided to leave Florida abruptly after that situation, uh, which is 
still under investigation. Um, and so when I decided to relocate to Arizona and I did not tell anyone, sometimes that's necessary. So sometimes it's necessary to leave those people, places and things that no longer serve our good, even though or despite our love for them, our care for them, the fact that we will miss them. Um, uh, the gentleman that I've considered my best friend for 30 plus years is in Florida, him and his family. Um, and uh, their youngest kid is uh, will be a teenager in, in two and a half, three years. And, um, and so, uh, yeah, I have uh, quite a few, quite a few uh, people there. Um, I have a daughter there who uh, is 25 and doing her thing. Uh, I've attempted uh, to love her unconditionally, but uh, I met her when she was, mm, I want to say 11 turning 12 or 12 turning 13, just in 2010. And uh, her mother is my high school sweetheart. Uh, we dated for four plus years. And when I went into the military, she decided she wasn't going to go to North Carolina with me. I was stationed at Fort Bragg. That was my first duty station, Hull, uh, home of the Airborne. And uh, she, yeah, she decided she didn't want to go. So uh, little did I know that she was pregnant. And then, of course, with the military, you move around. I did constantly or regularly. And she could never catch me. Well, she ultimately did through Facebook. Thanks, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I met a daughter I did not know I had in 2010, which was, to me, a tremendous blessing, again, especially after what I had gone through during that time. And I'm not going to get into that because that's I don't believe that's the road I'm to go down. Uh, it's to share... It's to share other parts, perhaps, of me uh, and give us some things to to think about, some things to uh, to consider, reconsider, uh, alleviate, perhaps, uh, or add to uh, our lives. And uh, so I met her in 2010, and uh, um, it is said, uh, scientifically, I believe, shown, that kids' personalities are developed between the ages of infancy and five. And between those years, uh, that is when their personality developed. And during those years, she lived with her grandmother, uh, who was extremely coddling and took care of her overly, uh, like grandparents tend to do, their grandkids. Um, especially if they're well, in most cases, it's when they're not living with them. But she, she, yeah, to the point to where she did not make her bed on bed. She did not fold her own clothes. She would not put her own clothes away. She would not, none of that. She, so when I met her, um, I definitely uh, had her mother get her from her grandmother's house because unless there's something wrong with the parents or the parents are obsolete or, or no longer living, there's no reason why a grandparent should be raising uh, uh, their son or daughter's child. Um, they're not the sperm donor or the egg supplier uh, of your child, uh, at least not directly, indirectly through you, yes, right? You being the next generation, but that's not their responsibility. You need to man up or woman up and take care of your responsibilities and have some accountability for yourself. Stop throwing all your responsibilities on other people in this world. That's not their job. They didn't lay down with that man or woman. You did. That was your choice. Take care of your responsibilities, okay? Um, and so when I met her, I was going through a very difficult time with another daughter and the polygamous father who took my first wife and daughter, uh, that uh, another daughter um, who wanted nothing to do with me at that time in 2010. It still doesn't today. Um, not to my knowledge. And so, um, yeah, so we all have different challenges and different things that come up against us 
Uh, and it is all, it is all a matter of how we respond. We've all heard that before, right? It's all a matter of how you react to the situation. Uh, sometimes I've reacted extremely well. Other times I have not. Uh, I can tell you one of the most challenging things for me to keep my situations to keep my cool in is when I've given my unconditional love and it is trampled on. Um, that that turns this guy into the Incredible Hulk and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that can get to be a pretty violent uh, looking picture. Um, and that violence is never directed at people. I'm not one of those individuals. Uh, I would, I would self hurt or destroy something before I hit someone. Um, that's not to say I would not have. I've dated, uh, yeah, probably a couple of women that needed their nokes next dumped on. Uh, uh, and yep, I probably wished at least one of them dead a couple of times. And being honest, I've probably done it more than a dozen, a couple dozen times, to one individual. But that's just part of the human nature, dealing with those emotions and getting all that stuff together and realizing that having malice and hate and all that stuff towards someone else doesn't do you any good. And ultimately, that's probably their whole goal, if they're attacking you, is to just have you in that place where you're depressed, someone who's constantly at you, right? Uh, and they're really not for you, uh, but they're just at you. So they constantly nag. That could be a relative, uh, and just FYI, uh, if no one else's story in this world tells a story of family having nothing to do with blood, mine does. Uh, my father, like I said, did witchcraft. Uh, and in fact, I've gotten away from calling him that. I call him my sperm donor, or I call him by his first name. Um, um, if he really is even that, I don't even know if he's that. He may not even be my actual father. There may be some other uh, stuff going on that's hidden from me that I am unaware of, like the property that they stole from me that my grandmother left to me, which is now being in the process of return to me. Um, so, yeah, so him and his siblings thought they were being slick, but, uh, or whoever else is involved in that situation. Uh, it's much larger than just Jim, them, from what I understand. I believe he's a, a Mason, and his sisters might be Eastern Stars, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, yeah, so, or he works with Eastern stars, one or the other. Um, so, and not all of them individuals are evil. However, uh, you have to be wise and use your intuition when dealing with individuals who are associated with those organizations. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so, When I got here to Arizona, I did not have a place to live. Uh, again, because I left abruptly, because I was following directions, I was following instructions. And uh, again, even if you walk by yourself, if you take the steps that you know that you are being told to take, it doesn't matter, or at least your faith should be strong enough to where it doesn't matter if someone walks with you or not. <clears throat> You should be confident enough in what you're hearing to walk by yourself. If you're not confident in what you're hearing to walk by yourself, then you need to validate the word that you're hearing or address the fear that is false. Fear is an illusion. Uh, fear is just man-made thoughts that keep us in the matrix. That's what fear is. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I feel like today is a new dawn and it's a new day. Um, it's a new chapter. It's a new, it's a new beginning. It's a new book. 
actually. For me, personally, it's a new book. It's not even a new chapter. It's a new book, brand new book. Um, the last book, I remember when, when the spiritual awakening started to happen. And I wrote in my journal on this day, uh, and I was still in a relationship with the karmic, uh, with the karmic Scorpio. Uh, and I remember, uh, I remember when the light bulb came on for me one day and I don't know what it was. I think I had already started meditating, um, and she didn't like that, I really don't think. Again, because she she's extremely traditional. So um, me being so going in, she probably sensing that my thoughts were not like their thoughts and my ways were not like their ways. Uh, when we would have conversations with our mutual friends and, excuse me, and things, I would probably say something that was bit obscure or maybe unorthodox unorthodox and uh she would maybe have a thought or maybe they would say something amongst themselves you know when i wasn't around i don't know um but uh i remember i wrote in my journal i woke up one day and it was like september of 2000 21 yeah I had not turned 47 yet I remember writing in my journal I have been asleep for 47 years and 9 months I wrote that exactly and I'm not looking at my journal at this moment uh, I just remember that specifically that I wrote that and it was around September and something just clicked it just I woke up one morning and something just clicked in me and something just said, this is a bunch of bullshit. Something just clicked. It just clicked in me. Something just said, what the fuck? What am I doing here? Like some, it just clicked. And even though there was a challenge emotionally from get, for getting out of that situation because of the witchcraft that was being done and not just by the warlock sperm donor, Right, that's serving a 44 to 66 year prison sentence. Can you hear that siren in the background? Hear the dog barking? Because I'm telling the truth. Those are confirmations. Hear that? I'm telling the truth. I am not lying. So, the karmic couple, right? My ex and her girlfriend who decided to get a penis or her boyfriend who decided to get a vagina however that goes are doing witchcraft we're doing witchcraft against me right they've now been stopped right and will soon be arrested if they haven't been or will not be over the weekend they soon will be so listen to that siren look at that so it's just yeah so anyway i love when most high confirms what you are saying and confirms it immediately loud and clear. I love that. I love that, right? There is no denying that. It's getting louder. The siren's getting louder. And like, there's no denying that. I'm telling the truth about the witchcraft against me. Regardless, see, that is where your faith has to be stronger in what you hear than in what anyone else is telling you. Because the majority of the individuals out here are not high vibrational. They have not ascended. They are in low vibration, manipulating narcissistic tendency type of lifestyles, okay? They are sex hungry, right? Their, their chakras are all cattywampus, all whack, all out of whack, right? Low vibration individuals that just use you for what you can get, even if you are also in low vibration, right? Because like I said, for 46 years and nine months, I functioned the majority in low vibration as well. Right? But even in my low vibration, I was not stealing from a company. I have been the only accountant, the only accounting professional in a company that's multi-million dollars. And I had access to every account. I'd never take from account. Never. I would never do that. 
I don't care how low vibration. I would never do that, ever. Why? The love I just general the general love I have for man for human that would not ever allow me to do someone like that ever, right? But again, not everyone is like that. This is why we have to protect ourselves. These are the things, right, that are not preached, right, in the churches. They may use the scripture about putting on the full armor of God, but they don't tell you how to do it other than praying and reading a scripture. You got to be faithful. Okay, that's, that's good. Okay, be faithful. Okay, that's good. Accountable. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. Okay. You got to pray without ceasing. That's good. Okay. But I've been praying for this for 10 years. Some might say, just hold on. I don't believe that. I don't believe a promise that the father gave you unless he said 10 years. I do not believe and he would. If he wants it, if he says 10 years, he would give it in 10 years. Okay. He may not give you a specific date, but if you ask him how long, he will answer you. Right? If he's not giving you indications as you take each and every step. Okay? Right? So if you want the house, get your finances together. Because that's something he's probably going to require of you. Not just because you're going to be applying for perhaps a loan, even if you are paying cash. You won't be need to apply, apply for a loan. However, uh, he would still want your finances in order because maintenance issues, things like that, property taxes, right? These are things that you currently renting do not have to pay for, right? So he will want you to have a better understanding and a better grasp of uh, your money management, okay? So, and for me to, to learn how to manage the millions he encouraged me to go to school and study accounting. And so that's what I did, right? So not everyone that you come in contact with, and I don't say this to make us paranoid or to have us be paranoid, but I caution us to not hand out all of our trust when we first shake the hand of the individual or when they first wink at us or when they give us their number or when we get their number or when they send us that message or when they reply to us, right? On that dating site, right? I'm not on any dating sites. I tried, what did I try? I tried one and then there was like some, some fake profile person and I was like, yeah, okay, I'm done. Like, it literally lasted that long. I was like, yep, okay, nope, not for me. Right? I don't have time to put up with with, with uh, doppelgangers, copycats, people who are out there just trying to scam people. I don't have to. I've been dealing with that my entire life thus far, including the women I've dated. I, I've been just, nah, right? So, again, I made the mistake of fully trusting from the beginning without evaluating. That's not a wise choice. That's foolishness. Okay? So I share my lessons with us in order to help us all grow, right? And hopefully you share your lessons. You share your lessons with your children. Um, and by the way, one of the, it'll probably be later today, um, uh, yeah, probably later today, I'm thinking. Um, but uh, parents, uh, training up your child in the way that they should go is probably going to be the next, uh, probably the next post, the next video that I post. Um, And having come out of the matrix, having come out of that situation, I realize the extreme, and it is extreme, the extreme significance of parents 
seeing the light in their children as early as possible and pointing them in that direction. Okay? Now, parents, parents, if you are not asking, if you still have children at home and you are not asking most high, um, the purpose for for why you birthed this son or this daughter into this world because you were just a vessel okay you do not own them okay they are not your property as man would have you to believe not from a spiritual standpoint okay because they may have been your grandmother in a previous life. They may have been your father in a previous life. Okay? They may have been one of your professors that you loved or a teacher you loved in a previous life. Right? I know I had a teacher um, and she's passed. Uh, uh, and I have no doubt uh, she's, she's, there's, there's no coincidence the reason why people are dropped into your spirit that are dropped into your spirit. And uh, her name is Patricia and Zubzik and Zubzik and uh, CIC. And uh, she was an elementary teacher, a middle school teacher at Jane Adams Middle School in Bowling Brook, Illinois in the 80s. Uh, she retired from there. Well, she retired ultimately, obviously, but I don't know if she retired from that school she may have um, but she was uh, and I had a lot of great teachers I had one uh, one or two good professors when I was in school that that really that I was really drawn to um, but as a kid she was uh, yeah she was definitely uh, amazing she was funny she was she was she was she was an interactive teacher, you know, she was, she was involved, you know, um, and it seemed like I remember, and this is going back to like 80, 80, August 87 through like June of 88 kind of school year, I think is when I was in her class, so it's going back a ways, but uh, I remember exactly where her classroom was, it was right next to my math uh, teacher's class, and it's ironic, I did not like him, <laughs> I did not care for him. Uh, and in fact, I don't even remember his name, but hers was right next door. So that just goes to show you the influence that one individual can have over another, even though you literally, the class was literally right next door, you know. Um, uh, the classes were literally right next door to one another. And I have no idea. I want to say Mr. Williams, but that might not be correct. I have no clue. I have no idea. So, um, and I remember my science teacher's name from that year, and her name was Miss King. And uh, I remember her name. I don't remember any other teacher's name. I remember her name because I remember one thing she told me. And this is something that I've done. You guys are going to find this kind of comical. So, <laughs> so she was my earth science teacher, Miss King Laws. And uh, I remember her telling us, She's teaching us about gravity and how gravity works and, you know, no gravity on the moon and, you know, and we're learning about Neil Armstrong and all them and that. Um, and uh, there's another siren. <laughs> this keeps inferring truth coming from this person, truth coming from this person, this person speaking truth, this person speaking truth. So. Uh, even in the little things, speak truth, right? There's no need to lie. If you took the Twinkie, say you took the Twinkie. Twinkies are gross. I haven't had Twinkie in probably 40 years. Twinkies are <laughs> yuck. <laughs> um, but so, um, yeah, but don't lie. Even about the little things. Um, she said with gravity, she said something she started, I don't know how many years before she told us about this. She probably gave this example every year. But uh, she said, she start when she uh, she started learning about gravity and how over years gravity pulls your body down like it just you know right so your skin and everything so she said whenever she washes her face or whatever she does you know whatever her skincare regime was I didn't even know what all that was back then right 
but she said she pushes her face up, right? She pushes her, so her skin under her, on her neck, she pushes her skin up, her forehead, she pushes it up, right? And I thought, huh, I don't even ask me how I remember that. I, I remember that one thing, don't ask me about any other lesson she ever taught me in that class, in that earth science class. I remember that lesson and I do that. I do. I don't do it every day, but I do. When I think about it, I do it every day. Even if I'm not in the shower, I'll just sit there. I'll be sitting at the desk and I'll just take my hand and I'll just push my face up. Why? I don't know because she taught me that. And to me, that's a valuable lesson for preventing your face from looking like a Sharpe. <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, it's just, you know, so little things like that. I'm just, I don't know. I've always been like that. So, so Ms. Zubzik, uh, she passed in 2018. I definitely wish I could have reached out to her. That would have been, that would have been a gift, uh, 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 for me. And I believe for her, uh, I do believe she would have remembered me. I was such a class clown. Um, believe it or not today, I'm, I'm really quiet in my life. Uh, when I'm on here talking is about the majority, the most that I talk in a day. So if I do a 60 minute video and post that video, that's about as much as I talk, uh, verbally, uh, these days, uh, I don't, I don't verbally talk to many people. I'm to myself. There's another siren. I'm to myself.